Namaste everybody, Irina here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I invite you to a cross-legged seated position. We're going to start um, online session very shortly. So if you are sitting in Sukhasana easy pose and you're finding that you're quite struggling with keeping the back straight and you're kind of rounding through the back, maybe trying to sit on the block to elevate the pelvis, which will allow the knees to drop. And you may also use some of the props, the bricks or the blocks under the knees, or maybe folding a blanket, something that will uh, help you to rest your knees on. So with this um, practice, we're gonna be focusing on the back bends. Um, nowadays, it's very common to suffer from a lower back problems, and the reason of those problems could be various. So please do consult your um, medical professional before starting uh, the yoga journey if you do have any um, lower back problems or any other uh, health conditions. So the discs are the common problems of lower back pains and it could be a herniated or bulge discs. And for that, the, ba the back bends actually quite beneficial. Uh, if you do suffer from a herniated disc, you probably were advised to try to avoid flexion of the spine, which is a forward fold. Um, so please follow that advice, but still you can go into the forward folds, but maybe trying to hold your back in neutral position or more of extension rather than flexion of the spine. And when I'm talking about flexion and extension, extension which we're going to go into the back bends so very gentle flexion rounding through the back and when we move when we're flexing and when we are extending the spine that disc that cartilage the fluid inside gets moving and that's how it's getting replenished of, of a certain uh, chemicals that necessary for keeping it lubricating and keeping your discs in a healthy condition okay so you are already in a cross-legged position let's position the hands on the knees keeping the chest open just taking a few moments to arrive to the mat keeping the back straight the chest is open notice the facial muscles are you holding any tension and if you could maybe relax the jaw the space between the eyebrows is soft the forehead is soft be aware of the body be aware of the sensations the physical sensations in the body Paying attention to your mental, emotional state. Just observing without any judgment, without labeling. And start deepening the breath. Bringing the deep abdominal breathing. As a rule of thumb, I would suggest to use count of four on the in-breath and count of four on the out-breath. You may insert um, one count for holding the breath between the inhalation and exhalation if you wish. Very gently open the gaze and let's bring the palms up. Looking up and exhale through the center. Let's bring the arms to the sides. Let's bring them behind you. Maybe with the fingertips you're pressing into the mat and we're going to open up through the chest and just very gently we're going to extend through the spine, roll the shoulders back. Keep pressing with the fingertips, maybe arch through the 
neck and stretch the throat. And very gently coming into the tabletop, all four. Knees are with hip apart. And you're bringing your hands under the shoulders, just paying attention to the alignment of the body. Inhaling, let's get him into the extension of the spine. That's where we are. Should we looking up? And on the exhale, rounding through the back and looking at the navel. Inhaling, arching. Exhale, bring the shoulder blades apart. Look at the navel. In, deep through the nose. And out as well through the nose. Let's tuck the toes, lift the knees off the floor. Pedal to the feet. And we're going to lift the right leg. We're going to look forward and we're going to bring that right foot forward. We're going to drop the knee to the floor. Just notice that I'm tucking in the back toes just to give me a bit more stability. And here you can go a little bit further with, the, with your hips and sink in. And let's bring the hands behind, roll the shoulders back. Maybe index finger could be extended, both index fingers. And let's breathe for five breaths here. You can close the gaze if you wish. That would probably would interfere with your balance. Keep the chest open, keep the breath going. Two more breaths. And let's go into the left side. So we're going to pivot. So we're going to be walking our hands to the opposite side. You're on the left side now. And firstly, let's sink. If you're finding that it's too much, maybe you can hold a little bit, center the energy to the center. And let's bring the hands behind. Index fingers pointed. And let's bring the shoulder blades closer to each other. And look up. If you're finding that looking up is uncomfortable, maybe just looking forward. Two more breaths. And gently release the hands. Walk towards the right side so we're pivoting and we're stepping forward to the front of the mat inhale we're gonna halfway lift spinal extension shoulders trying to avoid tucking in and of your shoulders so we want to move them behind so we want to move 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 and exhale we're gonna round fold forward and maybe even hugging your ankles. And deep breath here. And release the hands. Inhale halfway, lengthening. Exhale, folding. And inhale all the way up and exhale through the center. Inhale, let's go into the back bend. So we're going to engage the glutes here, look up, exhale, I'm gonna fold forward, round to the back. Step back with your right foot, so right knee to the floor. Inhale, 
bring the arms up and have a few breaths here. So we're in Anjaniyasana, the lower lunge. If you're finding that it's too much on the extension of your right side, extended hip of the right side, maybe don't sink too deep. Okay, let's bring the hands down. Exhale into the down dog. Hold your breath here. Drop the knees. We're going to drag the chest, the chin, keep the elbows framed and inhale into the cobra. Up. Tuck the toes into the down dog. Right foot forward, left knee to the floor. Take your time here. Find the stability first and then sink. Open up. Keep the chest open. Remember, if you're hyperextending in the elbows, maybe keep them soft. Your gaze could be up or your gaze could be directed forward. Okay, let's bring the hands down, lift the back knee of the floor, turn to the opposite side, step forward, inhale halfway lift, exhale fold. Inhale all the way into the gentle back bend. And exhale through the center. Breathe in. Breathe out. Extend your arms. Inhale. Engage the glutes. Arch through the back. Exhale. Fold forward. Left foot back. Left knee to the floor. Keep your toes tucked in. If you wish, you can actually extend them, extend the ankle. Do you breath here? You can have your drishti directed inwardly. You can have completely intrinsic experience here, or you can look up. Or look forward. Okay, let's bring the hands down. Step back into the down dog. Hold the breath, drop the knees. Drag the chest. Keep the elbows close to the body. Uchangasana, very gently cobra. Hug the toes into the down dog. Left foot forward. Right knee to the floor. Sink with the hips first. Remember the back foot could be ankle, could be flexed, could be extended. And breathe. Five breaths. Okay, let's bring the hands down. Lift the back knee of the floor, pivot, turn towards the right side, step forward. Inhale, halfway left, lengthen through the spine, exhale, fold, round through the back, and inhale all the way up. And exhale through the center. Hmm. New breath. Okay, inhale, bringing the arms up. Exhale, we're going to fall forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthening. Plant your hands. We're going to step into the plank. Stabilize the shoulders. And the plank all helps us here to build that core strength. So for the lower back problems, sometimes we overcompensate and um, the problem is aggregates because, aggravates because we don't have a, a strength in the core. So 
strengthening the core could help you to elevate and assist with the lower back pain. Okay, let's bring the knees down. I'm going to press into Balasana, the child's pose. Breathing deeply, inhaling, allow the belly to expand. You'll feel the belly is going towards the thighs and on the exhale, the belly drops to the spine. On the next inhale, all four, and then bring yourself fully on, lying on the belly. So we're going to bring the elbows under the shoulders and forearms are pressing into the mat. So point the toes, keep the glutes engaged, keep the lower body engaged, and we're going to press into the forearms. We're going to stretch the throat and keep legs active. And keep pressing into the forearms. You may feel the tingling sensation in the lower back. Two more breaths. And release. Place the hands under the shoulder. And now press back into Balasana, the child's pose. Rounding through the back. If you're finding that you need to use blocks to maybe allow the forehead here to rest. You can also extend your arms to the sides. You can take them wider or you can bring them forward and take a few breaths. Okay, next one, Bhujangasana. Let's get into the Cobra. So let's go into the, another spinal extension, but this time we're gonna keep the hands under the shoulders. So if your sticking elbows sticking out, bring them close, frame the body. And I'm already here engaging my glutes, making sure that I assist the lower back with uh, strengthening the lower body, strengthening the legs. And now let's press gently into the hands. And if you're finding that maybe that's too much, maybe not going way off the floor with the chest, lifting slightly. You keep pressing into the hands. You keep your toes pointed. And you keep deep breaths. And let's decompress. Balasana. So let's get into the flexion. In, with the lower back where the disc problem, the herniated disc, being careful on any flexion of the spine. Again, using the props, the blocks. Maybe if you need to use two of the blocks here, you can use Okay, the third one would be, that one would be the bow pose. The bow pose, it's quite, um, it's a medium, I would say, a medium to advanced uh, pose. And I would like you to really approach that with hair. So with the bow pose or Udva Dhanurasana, modified Udva Dhanurasana, we're going to try and bring the hands to the ankles. Okay, being mindful on the knees here, you may find that you'll have, a, especially if you are suffering from the knees, your quads could be quite restrictive, just being mindful. So let's flex the feet. Inhale, let's bring the chest off the floor. You keep kicking back with your legs. Keep flexing. 
toes, keep flexing, sorry, the ankles, and you can look up. Two more breaths. Strong pose. And finally release and straight away flex the spine. And now you might find that that lower back is start giving you a bit of interesting sensations. So you just breathe. Remember in yoga, the dull pain, just dull sensation, it's okay. It's probably you are finding your edge. Anything sharp, anything electric like pain, stabbing pain, that's a no no. And that's the indication that you may have crossed the line and you need to back off, come out of the pose. And inhaling gently into the center, bringing your uh, body upward position. So we're going to add a flexion of the hips. Actually, I don't need a block. Or because I'm on a heel, I might need the block here. So I'm positioning my pelvis slightly elevating it and what it means that I can bring my heels closer and here interlace the fingers position them on the top of the toes and we're going to inhale and on the exhale we're going to start folding forward Keep your chest open, your elbows may be on the thighs and just notice the sensation in the groin, trying to keep extension, so trying to not to run through the back, but keep the back straight. So we are, I'm moving the shoulders back. You won't go as further with extension of the back uh, as if you would go with the flexion of the back and we're going to flex in the second asana which is Ladakanasana B variation. This one is an A and I encourage you to take it with the extension of the spine very gently coming out. If you're using the block maybe releasing it move your heels away and again that's a really good asana for opening through the hips but at the same time we are working on the back as well so interlace the fingers your pelvis will tilt backward so quite naturally you'll be flexing through the back inhaling and with that flexion and on the exhale we're going to go forward Your forehead may be reaching towards the heels, may not. You may find that you can't, you may not go as further as you wish. It could be here, it could be even here. But still, whenever we flex the spine, we allow a bit more space for the forward fold. When you reach your edge, Try to release the muscular tension and ease off into the asana and breathe. And very gently coming out of the pose, bringing yourself into the sukhasana. So cross-legged position. If you're finding Sukhasana quite challenging, I wouldn't even recommend you to go any further into the half lotus or the full lotus when both of your ankles are crossed on the thighs. Positioning the hands on the knees. And just reflecting 
in the practice. And bringing awareness into the lower back, noticing any physical sensation, it could be energetic manifestation if you are working with the energies if you are feeling the energy of the body notice the emotions and accept whatever outcome of this practice is very gently open the gate from here, you can go into your regular practice if you want an extended um, yoga session. Or you can go into Shavasana, relaxation pose, and have your 5-10 uh, minutes uh, laying on the back and uh, in the course pose. Or you can go into the meditation, the meditative uh, asana, and any of the meditation that you prefer. Thank you for joining me in this session. Namaste.